Guys, it's March 21st or 22nd, or I don't know, I'm losing track of my days here anyway, but uh, I've actually just unhooked the drill. The drill is right there. Uh, Mike, why'd you unhook the drills? Because it's ready to go, you guys. It's ready to go seeding. I'm ready to go seeding, but uh, it's too cold to go seeding. Well, Mike, how do you know if it's too cold to go seeding? When, when, when should you go seeding? What's an average seeding time? Typically, that second week of April, that is pretty average for us. Obviously, it's super early this year. Um, the earliest that I can remember going was March 28th. Um, that's the earliest I think I've seeded. Like I said, we're getting close to that time, but right now it's still currently too cold to go seeding. How do you know if it's too cold? Because if you can whip your pants off, and if you can't sit on that soil for longer than a minute, it's too freaking cold to go seeding. And the other way to tell is that the frogs, are the frogs croaking? No, the frogs aren't croaking. That means it's too cold. The frogs aren't even awake yet. So if the frogs aren't awake, it's far too it's far too cold to go seed. And well, Mike, what happens if you just go seed anyway? If it's dry enough, just poke it in the ground, it will rot. The seed that you put in the ground, if it sits in the ground too long, it will rot. So uh, you don't want to go, I don't like seeding twice. Sometimes I've had seed twice before, but I do not like seeding twice. So uh, we're gonna wait until it warms up a little bit. So basically, we're gonna go and we're gonna try and have a little bit of fun here. We work all the time, I know, and luckily, what we do, we do consider fun. But uh, we're gonna find a spot, maybe right here. Right where it's not growing very good. I think we did a pull out uh, here, I don't know, man, it's quite a few years ago now, but uh, yeah, exactly. I kinda wanna do a pull out, wanna have some fun. So I'm just gonna park this thing, maybe right there. Then we're gonna go get another tractor. You're right, we should pull off it just a little bit. Come in, we'll pro-till this stuff up. Yeah, this looks good. Right here. So let's do a little walk around. You need to know what your uh, competitor is here, but first, um, let me show you what we're working with. Okay, so right now we're rocking the uh, 9620 RX. Right there, yeah, good, good view. We do have some extra weights on it. Not a full pack of weights. Sorry about the wind. Um, we have these puppies. Uh, one on each side, weighing in at around uh, 5,500 pounds combined. So 5,500 pounds combined. We have some more weights back here. All together, the tractor weighs right around that 66, 5, 67,000 pounds. And I'm not sure what our fuel level is here. Probably don't got a lot of fuel. No, we're not, we don't, we're pretty low on fuel, so uh, that would add up. You filled that up as well. Now, Obviously, when it comes to pullouts, I know you guys got a lot of questions. Hey guys, I just shut the tractor off so that way you can hear me a little bit better. I don't have to yell to you. Um, I know you guys have some questions like, Mike, if you're going to do a pullout with something, first of all, we don't know what it is yet, but just give, it, give us a minute. Um, obviously, it must come down to horsepower. Um, that must be incredibly hard on equipment. Um, I can't believe you would abuse things like that, blah, 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 blah. Bruh. Bruh. All right, seriously. Okay, first of all, it has nothing to do with horsepower. You could take a 620 horsepower tractor against a 200 horsepower tractor. What it does come down to is it comes down to weight and pounds per square inch of rubber on the ground. That's what it comes down to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, this one has 620 horsepower. That's correct. This one is going to be coming in at the heaviest because it has those extra weights on the side. This will be the heaviest and the biggest when it comes to horsepower. But that doesn't mean a lot. It's got a lot of track on the ground. This has way more rubber than its competitor. And uh, you're going to need that weight to try and get pounds per square inch. Okay? Um, obviously, we're not full fuel. That doesn't matter. I'm not too worried about that. And uh, is it hard on it? Absolutely not. If you think driving two miles an hour, like until the strap goes boom, and then you either spin or whatever, if you think that's hard on it, 
then you would probably not want to tune in for my seeding videos when I put that 84 foot drill with that 1300 bushel cart back there and start climbing some hills until this thing either powers out or stalls. Most of the time it powers out and then you clutch it just before it stalls and then you try back your way down the hill to grab another gear and try and literally carve on an angle like the tracks are just digging ground, digging ground, digging ground, digging ground, trying to carve yourself back off the side hill. That's getting hard on stuff. What we're about to do, it's just fun. <laughs> Now in saying that, let's go and uh, check out his competitor. We'll go get it. Sorry about the wind. All right, which one are we gonna go to? You're right, the sprayer. No, I'm joking. Mm, you're right. I think in the two track, you're wrong. We're gonna go with the fence this time. And again, all the drills are up here. We're ready to rock and roll. So we actually have a little bit of time to kill. So we're like, you know what? Let's do it. What do you think, Lee? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Oh, yeah, we remembered why we don't like un, uh, unhooking tractors. It's because these big three quarter inch lines, they're kind of a bear cat to play around with and hook up and unhook. And that doesn't matter whether it's Fent, John, or your case. Three quarter inch lines are a pain in the butt. All right, let's fire this thing up. Turn the power on. All right, let this thing warm up a little bit. All right, we're just gonna come back. Should be good to go now. Drop my gloves off there. Okay, here we go. Don't you like the old Burt pulling that little old cultivator? It's awesome. Then we got the John Deere 4060, 1600 gallon tank. That's a classic bird, let me tell you. We got our triples on. So, it's not the first time I've ran triples. Um, won't be the last, most likely. But I did not run the triples last year, just FYI. I did put them on this year, but just because, you know, it kind of felt like it. Now in saying that though, this is also my, not my first pullout. First one I ever did was, uh, oh, quite a few years ago. It was a, it was actually a black 1050 against uh, that John Deere two track. And yes, I had my triples on it. It was pretty much a draw by the way. Um, they both just spun holes. And it was only like a two minute video. So Mike, what do you expect to happen? Um, I actually am not sure. I would say that I kind of expect to spin that four track out um, if it didn't have that extra 5,500 pounds of weight. Since it does have that extra 5,500 pounds of weight, uh, I don't know, it's a tough call what could happen. If this thing spins down at all and creates any kind of a hole, I don't think that four track is gonna pull it out. That's just my two cents. want to go seed guys if we don't get seeding pretty soon we're gonna be just doing all these different pullouts we're gonna have pullouts against the Burt and the old Massey and uh, well aka Ernie okay let's get lined up Walk around this 1050 a little bit. So we are rocking the 1050. There you go. There's proof. Um, this 1050 is weighted into around that 57,500, give or take. It has the bigger 3,300 kg weight. This isn't. I don't believe this is an option anymore on the new ones. You actually get a 2,500 kg weight. Mike, why is that? Because with that weight. And if you lower your tire pressure enough to get like three or four bars on the ground so you can actually get better traction, um, it does not steer at all at low speeds. Now, 
I'm saying that. We have our tires squatted about as much as we can get with triples on. I think I have eight pounds, six pounds, four or two pounds, maybe split the difference called three pounds. Because you want your outside one to be like the flattest. Going through a washout or something, you want that one just to be like nearly flat, push the tire in, pop back out. That way it puts the least amount of strain on these bolts. Oh yeah, by the way, we have one uh, 1250 kg weight here, and we have another 1250 kg weight here. Bored out and a little bit wider to keep the weight the same so that way you can get your spacer in between there. Well, Mike, obviously this isn't fair. Look at how much triples are on this thing compared to that four track. Actually, if you think that this fence has more rubber on the ground, you're delusional. That four track has way more rubber on the ground. It just, it's all about millimeters on the ground here, you guys. And obviously I can't even quite get four bars. I only got like three at best. And the reason is because my tractor doesn't weigh enough and I got so much tires on the ground. But there is a lot of rubber on the ground with these four tracks. And they run in the problem is they can't quite get the uh, pounds per square inch, which is the reason why, because these are 36 inch tracks, some guys are going 30 inch tracks to try and get more pounds per square inch. Because 30 inch tracks will actually out pull 36 inch tracks with the same amount of weight. Obviously you have a little bit more compaction, no big deal though. Um, they can pull a little better. So I'm told. Oh yeah, this is not how we're gonna do it. This is not how we're gonna do it. We gotta, we gotta wrap it a few times. We gotta make a few loopy loopy loops. We start looping everything, I'll show you this. It's a 240,000 pound strap right here. It's at the bottom one, it's the biggest one you can buy. Um, now the downside with these straps are these D-rings. Now we've had these D-rings come flying through windows before and have actually gone through three units before they actually stopped because there was multiple units and well that's a whole other story and people were flopping around on the ground like floppy chickens and so on and so forth so yeah I know what can happen believe me I know but we're alive so anyway um, we're gonna get wrapping all right so um, we're just gonna double it up this time this is a bigger strap than what we used last time we did this um, last time I think we used about 160,000 pound strap. We actually looped it through three times instead of just twice. This would be fair enough. Well, Mike, how are you going to know? Well, I can tell you how we're going to know. When when this tractor, no, yeah, this tractor, when we bury this tractor with that drill, hold on, hold on, with that drill loaded up, we're over 200,000 pounds. And I just literally, hold on, sorry. I don't even double it up because you can't because you're too far into the water. You you just go one stretch and you hit that tractor doing three, four mile an hour and then she just with an elastic and out you come. So if we can do that, if we break it with 65,000 pounds and 57,000 pounds just crawling on a double, bro, that ain't gonna happen. Ready, Lee? Yeah. Let's just, I'm gonna put some tension on it here. Hey Mike, I have a question. What's that? How much power do you think it will lose the 1050 with the CVT versus the uh, power box that the John Deere? Well, normally I would say when I'm pulling the drill, it's it's 500 engine, but uh, if you can get 450 to the ground, I think you're doing pretty good. Okay. Now, that doesn't matter for what we're doing here. It's not about power. It's all about weight and pounds per square inch. So it's weight, how much traction we have on the ground, and how much weight we have on pounds per square inch. That is all it is. So it's just gonna be a little bit of fun. Let's get at it. Ben. Okay. Circle around. Oh, maybe we there we go. Everything is good, everything's locked in. If you can tight rope it. Woo! Ooh. Never said I was good at it. 
Okay, we're gonna do a final walk around. Now, I do believe that the fence is actually going uphill just ever so slightly. Deer's going downhill just ever so slightly. So I'll take that with a grain of salt. Fire up this deer. Oh, well, that's where my other gloves went. My carpet's starting to get dirty. Mike, I thought you had the carpet in the 1050. I did, I took it out right now because we had to put all that wiring harness in. Take your shoes off. When you have carpet on, you always take your shoes off. That's code. Mike, are you gonna put the carpet back in the 1050? If I was running it, I probably would. I don't know if I'll be the one running it. Looks awesome. Let's continue our walk around. All right, let's do this. All right, Lee is going to the RX. We're gonna hop in the 1050. Okay, so I am not putting on the diff locks because he does not have his diff locks on. We gotta keep it fair. Um, I will give us a little bit of RPM, not that I need it, but a thousand would be just plenty. Really, our radio conked out. I got mine working here, but uh, Lee is, something happened on that other one. Of course, look at all that nice bird crap on there, eh? Can't keep anything nice. Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear. We're gonna be yelling back and forth. Lead to idle the tractor at 1,000, the same as me. And to go in first gear. I gotta turn off my truck right here. There we go. Okay. There we go. We're both gonna try to get off at the same time here. Here we go again, 1,000 RPM, first gear. Once the bolts start going. There it is, yeah, there it is. Hold on. Okay, so that time it actually stalled, stalled his tractor. Uh, he had it at 1,000, it just stalled it. Uh, well, it didn't stall it, but if he didn't hit the clutch, it would have stalled it. So I uh, told him to go to about 1,500. I'll wrap up mine just a little bit more, though I don't need to. And then uh, I'm gonna wait, and again, we just wanna keep easily pulling into it. So, uh, he was, I could definitely feel him wanting to pull me back, um, but once I started to dig it all, uh, yeah, I kinda figured we might spin that four track out. So, let's go out and take a look here. We're chewing a little bit. Not bad. Just chewing a little. That's not even a hole. That's just like, that's how it is when I'm pulling the freaking air drill. <laughs> so, uh, I could definitely feel you wanting to pull me back. Uh, but the minute I started to chew up a little bit, I'm just like a dead anchor and there's no way that you can pull me back. That's exactly what happened with that two track. Um, that actually surprised me a little bit just due to the extra weight on this one But again, there's two there's so much track here. It's actually hard to get it to pound per square inch Well, Mike does that mean that he won no it didn't that means that he hit the clutch Because uh, we were both going absolutely nowhere So I guess if I would have tried it with the duels on, that might have been different, but. So we're gonna just call it at that. Um, we thought about having somebody else video the other angle, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's needed. Nobody is going anywhere here. Um, I obviously can't pull this four track back as soon as it starts to dig. He obviously can't pull me back once I start to dig. And we're not even digging holes. We're just, we're just getting good traction, that's all. This is 
beautiful. You could not ask for better soil to pull in. It's not hard, it's not muddy, but it's very soft. This is awesomely. I wish I could smell it. I can smell it, it smells awesome. It's soil, man, it smells awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna back up, release the tension. Unless we think we can tight rope it first. Oh yeah, this is, oh man, ah, I could tight rope right on the edge here. Okay, I'm just gonna go on the one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that, that wasn't fair, I gotta go one more time. <laughs> okay. No cheating, Mike, you're touching the other strap. Woo! Okay, balance isn't my thing. Balance isn't my thing. Billy's <laughs> gonna give it a whirl. On one, yep. On one. That's, it's so tempting to do both, though. You can grab that second one to get your balance. <laughs> okay, now you do that, I'm gonna drive ahead. <laughs> oh, you're a better balance than I do. <laughs> oh, man, okay. You bitter? I'm bitter. On that note, we're calling it. You guys have yourself a good one. Till the next pull out with the Massey and the Burt, maybe. Guys, we're back in, the strap's off. Here we go. Nice little uh, four pop rig. Remember, our dip locks are not engaged on either tractor. Let's go see if we can find somebody else. This is a draw. <laughs> oh, I just love having fun. We just love what we do, guys. We just love what we do. All right, thanks for tagging along, you guys. Um, this is this is the big boy. This this is what makes this tractor work and grunt and nearly stall and trying to get up hills and so on and so forth. And uh, this guy right here, A.K.A. that drill. I'm just gonna back up here. All right. Okay, guys. Stay tuned for seeding. It's gonna be a heck of a year. Uh, there's lots of stuff, cool stuff planned. And uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Adios. <laughs>